So you were talking about Caiaphas, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. When he tore his, uh, when he tore his clothes, didn't he? Yeah. When he was, uh, when Jesus said, "The I am saved." So I would say that's him claiming to be God. And okay. Caiaphas so I said, "What more do you need to hear?" And he tore his robes, which are sacred robes, and he wouldn't have done that lightly. Um, so that was like for him, case closed. Right. So what was what was the follow up to that statement? What did Jesus say after that? Because actually, what we've identified here mm -hmm. with that, that whole narrative of Caiaphas is that there was actually a there's actually a false there, there's actually a false prophecy there, and I'll tell you what that is. Okay. Okay. He's going to show us where Jesus says he's got. So after we say it's Mark 14, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah. He didn't say anything after that. Okay, wow. hold on. There's a verse that says that you shall see the Son of Man come in the cloud of heavens. Um, this is after. That. Are you? Are yeah, you? And some stuff can get false testimony. You shall see the Son of Man come in the cloud of heavens. Um, yes, that's right. So it's mixing 23 with, right, okay. with, with, with Daniel. Who did Jesus? Who did Jesus say that to? He said it's the Okay. To the council, right? Did they see? Jesus come, he said, you shall see the Son of Man. Did they see yeah. it? And you will see. He said, you will see. You will see. see. Did they see it? The Son of Man. Did, did they see Jesus come in the cloud of heaven? Not that particular time. So it's a false prophecy then? Well, he hasn't come yet. No. Let, okay, open the verse. Open the verse. <laughs> That's right, yeah. All right, what does it say? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the mighty. Lord. I am, come and, and you will see. Yeah, the you will see. Why? Yeah, he said, you will see. He's not talking yeah. about the future tense, he's talking about the, pre the present tense. You will see the Son of Man come in the cloud of heaven. Did they see it? Did well, at that point in time, no, because he's standing in front of me, he had to complete his mission, he had to go to the cross, didn't he? Right, but for 2,000 years, yeah. right, Jesus was preaching among them. And even after Jesus made that statement, mm. did those people see Jesus come in the cloud of heaven, as it stated there? Uh, yeah, no, just the same they didn't see that. And it's a false prophecy. And well, but against that, yeah. the first line is, I am. And that's clearly, they knew that that was blasphemy. Hold on. So when the blind man uses the term I am in John chapter 9, verse 9, I, is he is he God? Of course, it's all about context, isn't it? Right. If we go to the Greek, right, What was what's the Greek use here? The Greek use of I am, it can mean just simply I am, or it can mean God, I no, am. No, but what is the actual wording use? I don't know. Right, okay. exactly. Ego yeah. amen. Right. So in John 8, 58, when Jesus says before Abraham was I am, the Greek word used here is ego am I, right? The blind man uses the same exact wording that Jesus used in John chapter 9 verse 9. But no one equivocates that the blind man is God. Yeah, sure, sure. Now in I, that context, the I am statement is exactly the same. It can just be I am. Absolutely. I am. Or, John. or, or, Absolutely, yeah. and or, or the I word am. I am, the word I am in this context can also mean I am the person that's to be spoken about. Yeah. I am the person spoken about. Sure. Do you accept that? It, well, no, I, I think that he's claiming God there. He's okay. claiming God's status for I am. Right, so can you show me, right, a clear, this is what I said to Alexander earlier, mm -hmm. right, and uh, he, he got, bless him, he got very philosophical, but he did not provide any substantial, clear-cut, unambiguous evidence where Jesus says that he is God, worship me. What I want from you, maybe you can provide that information, hopefully. Um, what's your name? Alex. 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 Alexander Alex. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, that's me. That's me. So, if you can show me a clear-cut verse 
like the father, the father in many verses in the Old Testament is very explicit. He says, for example, I am God, you should have no other God before me, etc, etc, etc. In fact, in Isaiah chapter 45, he said, there is no God except me, right? So God makes an exception to the rule. He says, there is nothing like me, there is nothing like unto myself. Actually, the Quran makes the same statement. The Quran says, Laysa kemithlihi shay. There is nothing equal, there's nothing, Laysa kemithlihi shay, there's nothing like unto me, right? So, if you can show me any evidence where Jesus says, I am God, which is quite similar to what the Father says, then we can analyze Analyze evidence. I, I first said Jesus didn't want to say to people, I'm God, worship me, because he doesn't want to have robots. He wants people to have free will. That's the first point. Okay. But he does make a lot of statements uh, which point to his divinity. So okay. he asked God, to sh the Father, to share his glory with him that he had at the start of the world. And in the Old Testament, God the Father says he won't share his glory with anybody. Um, he raises people from the dead, he'll judge all people. Um, all of those statements, I'd say, would, would lead up and point. Um, in the start of John, we had uh, him saying it's not his time yet, so he wants to hide his mission until he comes into Jerusalem. We just had Palm Sunday, and what did the people cry? They cried, Hosanna. Hosanna means praise. Yeah. Okay, so they're praising him, and he's accepting that praise. And they're seeing him as the Messiah. Now, the Jews obviously had the wrong idea of what the Messiah would be. They thought it would be a revolutionary sort of war leader, but he's actually coming to save them in a different way. Okay. Their eternal salvation. Okay. When you praise someone, right? Yeah. For example, in the Quran, Allah says, "Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusallu ala nabi." Verily, God and His angels send salutations to the Prophet, right? So, in Islam, we send blessings and salutations towards our Prophet, but we don't take the Prophet of God to be God Himself. So, when someone receives uh, praises, right, that's not indicative, neither is it evidence to suggest that that person is a divine being. Right. Okay. I can um, you can praise somebody. You can praise somebody. I, I can. I can say, Alex, you know, yeah. you you've done an amazing job. Well yeah. done, you know, and I can yeah. shake your hand yeah. on that. And I'm actually, I'm actually praising you, but mm -hmm. I'm not actually thinking in my mind. Actually, Alex is God. Yeah. You know, maybe I should take him as a god to worship him. You know, so the worship that Jesus, the the the, the, the praise that Jesus receives, is not the praise and salutations and and the worship that the Father received because. In the, Old, in, in the Old Testament, God is very specific. He says, you should only worship me. In fact, Jesus says, the true worshippers of God are those who worship God in spirit and in truth. Okay. Right? Yeah. Do you accept yeah. that? Sure, sure. Right. So, he said, the true worshippers of God mm -hmm. are those who worship God in, in spirit and in truth. So, okay, Jesus, every, anytime Jesus ever spoke, he always um, redirected his... Um, attention and praise to the Father only, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in John chapter 5, verse 30, it's what I said to Alexander earlier, is that Jesus said, I his cannot... His brother did praise him, didn't he, when he came back? Pardon? His brother praised him when he came back and he showed him his hands and his feet and he said, my Lord, and he took that praise there and he bowed James. down. James, yeah. yeah. Okay. James, yeah. Okay. Exactly. okay. But so he is accepting that praise there, isn't he? Okay, but this is what I was trying to explain earlier. Accepting praise is not the same thing as accepting um, an individual as a deity yeah. to be God or equal with the with the Father. And, I, and, and as I that sort of analogy that I gave is that obviously if I praise you, yeah. that's that's not really an indicator that I'm taking you as a God. You know. Oh, sure. So I of course, that, but it's just I think what I'm trying to say is there's lots of bricks in this wall, and that's what's building up the wall. It's not one statement. It's lots of statements. So the glory, but this is the... I'm not going to share my glory with anyone. God says, and then Jesus asks them to share the glory that we had at the beginning of the world, the beginning of creation. So Jesus is obviously not just a man. He's saying he was there before. Okay, the Bible. Okay, you're saying that Jesus is. Um, is so you're saying that Jesus is more than a man, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Let's just hold on. And he, he clearly makes other statements like, you know, I saw Satan fall from heaven. You know, I mean, that's just, that's just kind of a fantastic statement, isn't it? Yeah. Obviously, after a long day with his disciples, and he's chilling out with his feet up, and he says, hey, guys, guess what I saw? Okay. For example, you, you mentioned um, Jesus receiving um, 
praise mm. and it says that Jesus God will, shall not share his glory with someone else mm, yeah. but if we look at the definition of glory mm -hmm. right it says here high renown or honor won yeah. by notable achievements yeah. you know so clearly if God is um, bringing to Jesus's remembrance um, his nobility and his character you know and uh, you know how basically honoring the son yeah. you know there is nothing wrong with honoring someone because God is bringing to his attention his you know what he's done in this world for example you know the fact that he was a prophet the fact that he had a, a task on his hands you yeah, know I, so, I don't know whether I agree with that I think he's been he's been pretty clear there about the glory he's saying share your glory with me and God says I, yeah, yeah. yeah. John 17 verse 1 after they looked toward heaven and prayed father the hour has come glorify your son that your son may glorify you for you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. So clearly here, there's no question of him sharing the glory. He's asking, he's, he's actually praying to the Father to be glorified. Because that popped up in my mind. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Now this is eternal life that they may know you, the only, the only true, true God, God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. This is amazing. This is before the crucifixion. Yeah. He's saying my task is finished. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And this now Father. Yes. And now Father glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world, the world began. Was. Yeah. Before the world was. Before yeah. the world existed. But he still prays to be glorified. Yeah, but he's not a man, is he? Because he was there before the world. Okay, even the, the concept of pre-existence, yeah. we, in God's knowledge, we existed. Yeah, uh, yeah for example, yeah, you're saying. Exactly. Exactly. In, Jeremiah, okay. in Jeremiah chapter 1, but that's exactly the womb, I knew, exactly. I knew so, you. Yeah, 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 but that doesn't mean, yeah, he might have known us, but we don't know him. But he's claiming there that he knew God so before we, the world began. Okay, so... Yeah, we knew God as well. Right, okay, so... I didn't know God. I didn't know God. Jeremiah did. Um, was, can we have a look at the passage? It's everybody, a Jeremiah chapter 5, 1-5, yeah. One five, five, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Let's have a look. Jeremiah, chapter 5, is it? No, chapter 1. 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 I knew you before you were born, I set you apart. I know you as a prophet to nations, but it doesn't say that Jeremiah knew God. No, that's not the question. The question no, is no, but the, 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 yeah, exactly. The point here that I think is trying to stress here yeah, yeah. is the pre-existent form at this present point in time. I mean, we were born, and that's when we came into existence. That God might have known that we were going to come into existence, but I don't think we could have known Him. Look, I think, I think, I think what the brother's trying to say here, right, is that we all was in the knowledge of the Creator, right? Okay. We were all in the knowledge of God. Right. So, for example, if we look at Hebrews chapter seven, verse one, Melchizedek, mm -hmm. right? He says that he has no beginning of days, mm -hmm. no ending of life, mm -hmm. right? He says he's the king of Salem, priest mm -hmm. of the Most High, and he says he has no gene no genealogy, right? So, if you really want to make this equivocation, yeah. that because you know Jesus was pre-existent, mm -hmm. then we have to say Melchizedek, mm -hmm. who is also pre-existent, mm -hmm. he didn't even have a beginning of days. Hebrews Hebrew chapter seven, verse one. Right. So he said ex exactly. So he says he has no beginning of days, no end of life. Now, who do you know in the Bible who has no beginning of days, no end of life? It's the Father, right? The Father has those attributes. He has those traits, and we clearly can identify from the New Testament that there was someone else who carried the same attributes as the Father. He had no beginning of days. He has no genealogical line. He has no mother, no father. Mm -hmm. And he is basically resembling. Now, I've heard some different arguments to this actual conversation. I've heard Christians say that this is actually Jesus, right? Which I find quite, no, actually, quite, I actually quite, find, I actually quite, actually quite find that quite hilarious because we see that Jesus had a mother, right? In fact, Christians say that God, the Father, was his father. So clearly, this, we're not talking about Jesus here. So, so I'm not, not sure. Right well, what I can right. say here is he's saying at the end, without 
father or mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or the end of life, resembling the Son of God. But he wasn't the Son of God, he was resembling. Okay, no, but I think the, the main point you're missing here is that I'm not talking about who he resembles. I'm talking about the fact that he had the attributes as the father, mm -hmm. right? He had no beginning of days, no end of life. He was the, apparently the, the priest of the Most High, right? So now, if can, can I now say that this person's God? Could, should I start worshipping Melchizedek now? I wouldn't say that. Because again, Pre precisely my yeah, point. But he, do, he doesn't have all these other pieces that are coming together. He's not going to judge everybody at the end of time. Yeah, so the prophets... But why are you taking clear verses? Uh, wait, hang on, hang on. Yeah, go on. How, does, how, how does judgment? How does judgment prove the divinity? I don't get it. Because well, if I judge God, you, I yes. have a good knowledge of your life. Yes. What does that make me? No, you're just a judge. It doesn't make you God, does it? But I wouldn't be a just judge, would you? No, no. It's not a question of just judge. I'm, I'm just saying well, this is, but that's that what's going to happen not the authority. Like you're going to be no, no. The authority is given by the father which is very clearly jesus yeah. says that all authority has given to me by the father yeah. now if he's supposed to be god he is the authority okay. so there's no question of re being recipient of the authority right so jesus christ people don't say categorically clear that the words you hear are not mine but my father mm -hmm. okay. yeah yes, which is which is actually the, the which is actually the role of every prophet and messengers which is to convey the message that God has revealed to them. So this only prophets, proves... But a lot of prophets don't do that. What do you mean all prophets don't do that? A lot of prophets don't convey the message of the Father. What are you really? talking about? Oh, look at Jonah. They all follow God. No, 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 Jonah didn't. Jonah ran away from God. That's why not, he ended not, up in the way the of Or the fish, I should say. Not well, you see the prophet. So God, but you see yeah, but Moses, are you saying that Moses didn't convey them? Are you saying that Moses... Moses ran away, didn't he? he no, hold on one second. No, no. When no, God... He, he said, no, don't send me, send Aaron. No, hold on one second. When God gave the Ten Commandments... So they don't all follow exactly. That's so are you the saying point. they're false prophets? No, I'm not saying they're false, but I'm saying so, they're human. And so they're not... You know, God says, I want you to go and do this. Well, we never and said... We, and, and that prophet sometimes doesn't do what God says. No, that, no, that's, that's absolutely incorrect. No. No, the no, prophets, no, no. Jonah no, didn't go no, no, the, the prophets and... Off, no, the prophets... Yeah. Yeah, but this is shortcoming. This is not a sin. Human beings, like us... Human beings... probably is. No, no, no. Yeah, I, I, human I mean, beings, <laughs> the prophets sure. and messengers, they were no more than human beings. Yeah, in the Anabashir Mithuna, right? That indeed I am just a Bashar, I'm just a mortal like you, yeah, right? Sure. So, of course, human beings, including prophets, will make mistakes as human beings. For example, forgetfulness. Yeah, we forget, right? But in terms of committing major sins, like for example, David committing adultery and Solomon com committing idolatry, this is, this, is, th this is not a man of a prophet. So this is a committee according to the Bible. Whereas the Quran yeah, came no, here. This, this is taking your point, which but, is they're human, so they fail. No, but not no, sins, no. not major sins. Prophets don't sin. Prophets, don't sin. Well, prophets God, make. Well, David said he sinned, he said it in the Psalms. According to you. So the, well, David himself. So is he a man of truth? He's, he can still be a man of truth. How can he, he still be a man of truth committing adultery no, but, against God's so, commandment? But that no, actually. You you know, know, no, but hold on. That, you, that actually. No, hold on. That actually demonstrates. Have you done it? No, hold on one second. Lied? That demonstrates the deficiency of the father. Yeah. Because if the father is sending, and so are you saying that the father didn't know that David was going to commit this act? Because if you're saying, oh, oh, let's 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 actually analyze this for a second. Mm -hmm. Usually, right, when you're sending um, an envoy or an, an or an emissary mm -hmm. to a country, right, you're going to send someone who's going to best represent you, right, mm -hmm. right. So if you're if you're a prime minister or president yeah. of a country, right, I'm not going to send the guy that's down the road that's having ten pints of beer and then ten vodkas and is going to like trip up in the middle of the street. Now I'm not going to send you know someone who is deficient in this manner. I'm going to send the best of the best. You know, I'm going to send someone who's going to the best of the best. Wait. Mail. Oh, no, I'm not saying that don't, but what I'm saying... I he was the one guy who didn't. Really? And that's why you've got to ask yourself, why if you read what, If you read what... what okay, do you believe... Je sorry, sorry. Do you yeah. believe Jesus was sinless? Yes. Why was he baptised then? Um, he came to be baptised... Um, for the forgiveness of sins. For the forgiveness of sins. Yeah. Okay. For the forgiveness of sins. So that Jesus is a sinner. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Jesus is a sinner. I mean, it's very clear. Yeah. He's a lot of telling why he's been baptised and now. Yeah. Sorry, I just want to. I, I, I just want to get back on. Yeah. Here. Sorry. Sorry. No, 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 okay. But I think that's a very good point you mentioned. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I'll, let, I'll let you look. Yeah. I can be erratic. <laughs> Oh, 
Yeah, so a voice came from heaven, you are my son who, I'm, who I love, I'm well pleased with. Yeah, but don't we say he was sinning. No, what's the purpose of baptism? What is the purpose of baptism? Yeah. Baptism is for the forgiveness of what? Well, Jews were baptised as well, weren't they? I'm, I'm not asking about Jews, I'm asking about Jews. You say Jesus yeah. is uh, sinners, correct? Yes, that's right. sinners, why was he baptised? And he gives you the answer. Can we write you... the beginning of Mark's Gospel, chapter 1? He was for the forgiveness of sins. If I'm not mistaken, the River Jordan. Yeah. 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 So I'm just wanting to see what the... Okay. Uh, Why are you looking for that? I just want to yeah, say sure, something no, to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's actually a really, really interesting point there because yeah. it actually does demonstrate that Jesus is a sinner. I don't believe he did, yeah. but the, 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 the stuff I don't believe yeah. that as a Muslim. However, the Bible actually demonstrates that he was a sinner, according to the whole baptismal rites. Okay. But the thing here what I would like to stress to you, right, is that usually when you send an emissary or someone who's representing you, you're going to try and send the best person to do to, to obviously convey the message yeah. in its proper way, right? So if, if God is going to send someone who's going to commit fornication or someone who's going to commit adultery, then he's not sending someone who is going to be a, the best of examples to, to, uh, yeah. to, to its people. Yeah. And I don't, this is the reason why I personally don't believe this story, that David can actually commit a, a, a heinous sin like that. In fact, the Old Testament states that if someone actually commits adultery, that that person should be stoned to death. Mm -hmm. You know, are we saying that David is is liable to to, to be uh, to be stoned to death according to the law? It's, it's, it's just it just doesn't make any sense. You know. Yeah, well, I think I think the Bible just gives stories about real people that deals with real stuff. I think the Quran's view of the prophets is perfect. Uh, it doesn't, you know, no, no, like no. when I say perfect, caught looking at pornography on his phone, you know, he was full of contrition. He's like, now he's done a lot of good stuff, but he's going to be remembered for that act, isn't he? And that's, that's a real shame. Thing, yeah, but it's true. But you can't liken someone who's watching pornography, um, you know, in the House of Commons to, to, to a prophet who has been sent by the creator himself. You know, God, when he sends his prophets, he's going to send his best representative. He's going to send who is going to deliver the message in its in its in, in its entirety and in its how it's supposed to be delivered? God is not going to send a fornicator. God is not going to send an adulterer. Because remember, prophets are those who are they are the peak of standard. And what I mean by that, they are the ones that are representing the the, the message of the Creator Himself, right? So God is not going to send someone who's going to sin and who's going to cheat and who's going to like. He doesn't want them to do that, but they're human, so they do that. No, no. What I'm saying is that prophets can have shortcomings, right? Because this is this demonstrates their humanity. That when someone has a shortfall, this demonstrates their humanity. But then committing sins, like like for example, we look at the story of Lot. Lot had sexual intercourse with his two daughters, right? According to the Bible, and he actually impregnated them. No one was now, with all due respect, so that sounds like a Jerry McCall show, right? But the thing is, right, is that why would God send someone who would commit such? This line came from a temple prostitute. No, no, but I, I think you're missing That's the... even worse. No, but what I'm trying no, to say... I'm going to agree with your points. Do you agree with what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm saying it's, right. Isn't this weird? But it's, 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 it's actually sinful. Well. No, but it's actually sinful to even conceptualise that, that God will send someone who is as is, is evil as this. Yeah, exactly. Well, we're all sinners. We're all evil. No, we're all no, doomed. No, we're no, all... No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Sorry? That is a really high level. You know, really but you're just judging by man's standards. God's standard is much higher than yours. I agree with you. God, God is... Um, okay, hang on one thing at a time. Let's talk about standards, okay? You know, God's standards are Hold up there. So all sin Hold is bad for God. Are you giving the, that that God is all knowing, omnipotent, omniscient? He knows the future, He knows yeah. the present, He knows the past. Sure, sure, yeah. So why He would choose someone? If you say giving that standard to the God that He knows everything, He would choose that person. He better choose anyone else. We will never do this. But we're all sinners. No, but not that level. I say that Jesus? we are a sinner, but we're not that level. I think, level brother. Are, I think, well, I think Solomon is an idolater. Yeah. You know, in a, in a but all, God views all sin as bad. 
you've just got man's mind of sin in your in your head because you say I'm not as bad as this person. I'm not as bad as this person. According to your standard, no, no, that's fine. According to your standard, someone stealing and someone is killing, both are equal. Both are the same standard. No, my standard is different from God's standard. No, no. Well, I answer my question. God's standard is higher than ours. Alex, I think we are. If someone stealing, if someone stealing and someone is killing someone, are both standards are equal? Yeah. Are both are equal? Look, according to God, yes. Alex, Alex, what it was, what what it is, Alex? The wages of sin are death. The wages of sin are death. And you're a sinner, and I'm a sinner. Okay, so it's mean that the courts are here. Alex, no, no, it's okay. Alex, Alex, I'm. I feel more rational than the courts. We're sidetracking a bit. Yeah, you're sidetracking. Sorry. Yeah. Alex, what I'm trying to say is that in the Islamic belief, right? Maybe we should give you the Islamic concept. Is that in Islam, we believe that God. Will send his best representation to deliver his message, yeah. right? Because prophets are examples. They, they, they actually. The, the point of God sending prophets is that we can follow the message and mimic their lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mimic their lifestyle. So, for example, if you have a prophet that's actually make, committing adultery, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Then there's a possibility that the people following that prophet would most likely follow what those prophets are doing. Well, I disagree so, because is, is, uh, David, King David, was very clear, you know, uh, the prophet turned up to him, his name I forgot, and said, you know, gave him that analogy of the, of, of, of the, the goat, yeah. you know, the guy with one sheep and then someone with lots killing him. Okay. And David suddenly realised, yes, he's talking about behind a sinner. And should, he then realised... Should, should, should David, should David, should, da should David have been, according to the Mosaic law, right, the punishment for adultery is what, according to Mosaic law? Yes, it's turning by death, yes. Right, okay. So, are you telling me, should the prophets who committed adultery, should they have gone through that Mosaic law of being killed? Uh, the law is there to show us our failings. It's not necessarily to be implemented. No, you're not okay. answering, you're not answering this question. Yeah. Should the prophets, I mean, may God forgive me for even asking this question, because it's, I, I feel bad even asking this, because I don't believe that the prophets of God would even like begin to even conceptualize, um, you know, committing like acts of adultery or fornicating, because the whole point, the role of the messengers is. The role of the prophets is to show by example. So their life is an example. Just like you, you believe that Jesus was an example to mankind, right? Or to the children of Israel. So the same thing. God is not going to send someone that's going to be as sinful as, you know, showing bad examples such as fornicating. God's not asking to do those bad bits. Whoever he sent would have failed. The point is, I don't believe for a second that... Prophets are not sinners. Prophets, so they're sinners. No, prophets make mistakes due to their human so nature. Sin? No, no, that's not sin. Sin, by definition, means you're transgressing, transgressing against God's laws, right? What we're saying is human human beings make mistakes because of the human nature. For example, we have shortcomings of memory, okay, um, yeah. misjudgment, yeah. right? These are what the prophets do. They can make mistakes. However, to attribute to associating partners with God and committing adultery. Well, no, just, this is this is this, this is breaking against God's realistic. laws. I think I think the Bible has much okay, more. Okay, do you know Jimmy Swagger? Do you know Jimmy Swagger? No, I don't. He was one of the yeah, most fo the famous Barbara. Christian missionary. Yeah. Okay. He debated with Ahmed Didad back oh, in 1985. Yeah. Do you know after investigation, yeah. he he was considered to be a man of God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Up until when they found out afterwards, he was womanizing. He was sleeping with prostitutes. Do you believe he's a man of God? Not of those actions. No. Correct. Yeah. So let's be consistent. We're talking, about, we're talking about David, but King this, David. This is the point. The message can be, the message can be correct, but sometimes the messenger can fail on it. No, 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 no. no. The See, we would, would deliver the message clearly, and they act upon it. But making mistakes because of the human nature—that's completely different. Yeah. yeah, but that's because we're sinners. No, no, no. Uh, we can have, in other words, Alex, what we're trying to say is that we can have shortcomings. We can have shortcomings. But these shortcomings are not shortcomings that could lead one into hell. For example, like associating partners with God, for example, or committing acts of adultery. The Bible's clear, the wages of sin and death. Okay, okay, let, let's, let's... Does that include Jesus? Does that, does that apply to Jesus? He was sinless, though. How? I just showed yeah, you. Yeah, no, I don't agree with that. I, I just think, showed you Mark's gospel. Yeah, I, I, I haven't looked at that particular bit, but my understanding of that is that he came to show us, because John said, I can't baptise you. No, but in Mark's and gospel... He said it has to be, and Jesus said it has to be fulfilled. No, so, but in Mark's gospel, it mentions yeah. categorically clear that Jesus was baptised. Yeah, and John... and, John, and didn't say that he was baptised for no, 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 sins. No, no, no. 
John the Baptist baptized people for the forgiveness of sins. Hold on. Where did Jesus say that? that hold on. Where did Jesus say? Well, Jesus was baptized. Hold on one second. Where did Jesus? We've got to get our head around that. Alex, Alex, where did Jesus say, right, himself from his own mouth, that the wages of sin is death? Where did Jesus say this? Well, it's in the Old Testament. Right, okay. What I want to know, because you see, when we look at the Lord's Prayer, right, Jesus said, in order for your sins to forgive, to, uh, to be forgiven, that you need to ask God to, uh, you need to ask God to forgive you. That's the way how your sins are remitted. It's not remitted through bloodshed. Mm, it's actually Romans 26, 26. Oh, Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly the reason why I asked that question, because I know it's not in the Old Testament. Yeah. This is what Paul said. Paul. Paul said, right, the wage of sin. So in other words, in order for your sins to be forgiven, the only way that your sins could be remitted is through blood, yeah. right? But the gospel... But Paul didn't say that. That was coming back from... No, but hold on. Um, but these are not... Exodus, was Right. It? Hold on one second. That verse in Romans is not the words of Jesus. This is not Jesus' words. I am specifically asking, where does Jesus say... Hold on one second. I, I just want to just bring two points here if we look at Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 20 right it says the soul that sins it shall die the son shall not be made to suffer the iniquity of the father neither shall the father be made to suffer the iniquity of the son every person shall die for their own iniquity and every person shall die for their own sins yeah. right and also if you look further down the, the page it says that if you turn to God and ask for his forgiveness yeah. right God will not remember what you've done. Mm -hmm. So clearly what it demonstrates here is that if you ask God directly to forgive you, yeah. God will forgive you. In fact, the Quran even makes that yeah. claim. The but, Quran God, but God also shows that he will die for our sins. Like the, 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 Sorry? Where, where? Okay, well, uh, this is where, this is where like, okay, the, the, the Bible makes categorically clear that he alone is immortal, correct? Absolutely. Now, what is immortal by definition? Immortal mm -hmm. means you're exempt from death. You believe Jesus died for your sins, correct? Uh, yes. That's okay, right, yeah. so God died for your sins. So therefore, he cannot be God then. That's it. Why is that? Because he's, he's supposed to be exempt from death. And he died for three days according but to the belief. But God showed Abraham that he would die. Who would die? That God would die for his sins. So when they, where, when where, where they, when they cut apart the animals, do you remember that bit? No, but hold on. We, we're dealing with the exempt. The exempt from death is the most like uh, crucial. We're talking, we're talking about immortality. Yeah. Yeah, sure. But uh, but but sin is so serious that it needs that blood to be spilled. No, but not not according. To, to be no, but not according to Jesus. According Jesus, to Jesus, if if that was if, okay, if that was so true that Jesus yeah. said the only way that your sins could be forgiven is through a blood sacrifice, then why did Jesus say? In the Lord's Prayer, because when they asked him, how do we pray? The disciples came to Jesus and they asked him, how do we pray? What was the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Forgive us our trespasses. Yeah. Uh, so what are those trespasses? Your sins. Exactly. So if Jesus thought for himself that the only way mm -hmm. that my sins can be forgiven is through a blood sacrifice, then there will be no need for the Lord's Prayer. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so look so to this. We've are got, you with me? Or? We've got Genesis 15, right? At the end there, 17. Uh, when the sun had set and the darkness had fallen, a smoking fire pot with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces, which were the animals which were cut in half. Yeah? Okay. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham and said to the sons, I give you this land from the Wadi of Egypt to the great river Euphrates. Okay, now what's, what's happening there is in, in, in those times, you would make a, an agreement with the master and the servant, and you put the animal out and you cut it in half, and the servant would walk through the pieces of the animal, right? And that would mean if I don't agree with the covenant that I've made with you, you can tear me in half. Okay, but in this instance, God walks through the piece of the animal and Abraham doesn't. So that's showing there in Genesis uh, verse 17 of... Uh, Alex, how does, that address my, uh, how does that address my point of Jesus specifically saying... Well, I'm saying about, the, our yeah, about, the, about the sins bit. Yeah, the, the, because the Jesus... Had to be spilled. So Jesus said, I'm going to do this all the way in the future to save you guys. No, hold on one second. That's the, These that, words are not mentioned in yeah. Jesus. You're, you're do, but, 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 that, but we say that Jesus is God. So when God walked between the pieces of the animal, we say that's Jesus. So okay. So what's your understanding of? Oh, no. uh, but but, but we say he's God. So well, hold on. What what is what do you understand by the Lord's prayer? What what's, what's your understanding? Uh, I 
Let's um, break it down. What, okay, what do you so which bit in particular are you talking right, about? Right, okay. Because you said earlier, right, is that the only way your sins can be forgiven is through a blood sacrifice. Yeah. Which I actually think is actually quite cr because if Jesus, if, if the father loved his son so much, I don't know if you've got kids. Do you have kids? Okay. Do you love your kids that much? A lot, yeah. Okay. <laughs> would you send, question. right, okay. So would you send your son to die for me? Uh, for you? Yeah. If you love your son that much as you claim, and I'm sure you do as a father, yeah. Alex, yeah. and bless you for that. Yeah. But would you send your son to die for a man that robbed HSBC? Mm, mm. Yeah. I mean, look, would a, you do that? it wouldn't do any good. Because my son isn't sinless. No, no, no. I'm saying, but so would you... it's kind of, it's a kind of nonsensical. Question. No, it's actually a valid question. And I'll tell you why. If you because you're in sinless, and I was pure and sinless, yeah, and I loved you, and you robbed eight, and you would send your son to die for me. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you would. That's what it's about. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, personally, I think if you was actually put to the test, I, I don't think you'd follow through. Of course, I would. Because I'm exactly my point. I'm but that's that thank our, you. Okay. That, that means so our, wait, so <laughs> that means our love for our children is much, is far greater than the love that the father has for the son. Then no. Yeah. You yes, don't understand his love for you. No. Because if the, you okay, much if the father is much higher than the your own if, family, if the if the wouldn't die for sorry, me, sorry, I wouldn't Alex, die for you, but if, he would. Alex, That's Alex, be point. true to yourself. Be yeah. true to yourself. If the father loved the son so much, yeah, so much, he would die. The father the would father. do anything, yeah, yeah to yeah. keep the son alive, right? But in your theology, no, 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 no. We send the innocent well. son. And he dies for our sin. Alex, right. you wouldn't push your son. You wouldn't push your son in the middle of a, a. You know, if okay, let's say for example, you saw a car driving at I don't know 50 miles an hour, right? And you was about to save. You was you know, unfortunately, he let's. I don't like using these examples, yeah. but let's just say for example, right? There was a car coming at I don't know 50 miles an hour, right? You're gonna step in the road to save your son. You're not gonna push your son in the middle of the road and say, "Hey, I'm, 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 I'm gonna push my son to save myself." You're gonna push yourself. Hold on one second, Alex. You're gonna push yourself to save the person you love, exactly. because that's because that's the nature of a loving father. A part of a loving father is that you protect the person you love. So, for example, so it's it, it's irrational to believe, right, that if you love someone that much, you do everything to save them, and. If we look at Islam, Islam is the only belief that actually believes that God, the Creator, saved Jesus. He protected him because that's what a loving God does. You know, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was asking God, what was he asking God? God, please take the cup of... Yeah, hey, but your will be done, not mine, is what right. he also said. Right. So exactly. he's bending to the Father's will of what needs to happen. Right, but did not Jesus say, right, in Matthew chapter 7, he says, ask and it shall be given. Right. Seek and you shall find. Shall be open to you. Yeah. When Jesus was about to rise Lazarus, when Jesus was about to rise Lazarus from the dead, he says, I always, Father, you always hear my prayer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? So we have but many. He also says, I want to do your will. And this is, he's saying, Is there any other way? And he says, Let me have your will so I can go through with this awful okay. procedure. I want, right, okay. Uh, in Islam, yeah. we believe that it. The, the God, in His infinite wisdom and also out of His mercy, protected Jesus. Yeah. Right. Now, there is an interesting conversation in the New Testament, right, between the devil and Jesus. Right. And I'm going to draw your attention to this verse, and then uh, I'm going to try and find it. Uh, bear with me. I need to actually find it. I'm going to come back. I'm going to pray. Also. Yeah. Okay. For another person, so, yeah. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. I understand that, but, uh, but Jesus yeah, Jesus is not. Yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I believe it's Matthew chapter 4, verse 5. Four. Uh, I don't need to. This is throw yourself down for his written he will command his agents concerning you and lift you up in their hands so that you'll you will not strike your foot against stone. Is that the one? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Right. Now this is if we look at Psalms chapter ninety one. Yeah. Right. It says now, Matthew chapter 4, verse 5, it says that you shall not hit your, your feet, you should not. Yeah. Right, okay. 
Right, so this is talking about math, uh, Psalm chapter 91. And this is actually proof that the Messiah was saved, right? Yeah. And this is evidence is that this, in fact, it actually has this uh, substitution hypothesis. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you're aware of the, the substitution hypothesis that some early Christian uh, beliefs, mm -hmm. like the Mandians, have you heard of the Mandians? Right, the Mandians were early Christian sect. Yeah. They believed that it was Simon of Cyrene mm -hmm. who died on the cross, right? Some uh, Mandians sect, they also believed that it was Thomas the Apostle that died in place of Jesus. So we see that early Christian communities did How not were, actually... What, what, what era were they? They were roughly dating around the second century. That's quite a long time after Jesus' death. Though, no, it? not necessarily. Well, but this and is... They didn't appear at the time of the crucifixion. But they were considered as Gnostics. And if you... They, okay, yeah. we're going to read this and I'm going to draw you back to this, right? It says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you. Listen to the key words here. Surely he will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. This is why I was talking about mm -hmm. the substitution hypothesis. The early Christian sects, like the Mandians, right? in fact, the early Christian community were reading a completely different gospel. In fact, there's a gospel called the Second Treatise. They were, they were called Gnostic Christians. Okay, but that, right? was, that was second century. No, some of these Gnostics appeared in the first century. And in fact, if you read the second treatise of Great Seth, the second treatise of Great Seth was an early gospel that was used. And in fact, in the second treatise of Great Seth, it actually states that it was Simon of Cyrene who died on the cross. Okay, well, Simon of Cyrene yeah. who died on the cross. Um, I would say that... Uh, but sorry, can I just finish was, reading this to you? Yes, sorry, yeah. Right, okay. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. It says, if you say the Lord is my refuge and, and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you, nor disaster will near, come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you. This is the yep. verse we read in yep. Matthew 4, 5 to guard you in all his ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Would you yeah, accept yeah, that as yeah, talking sure, about sure. Jesus? Um, not necessarily, no. Well, so why would, why would Jesus quote so, Psalms 91 then if he's not talking well, that about was, wasn't, That was when the devil took him up to the high place and quoted that to him, didn't he? he said, yeah, he's quoting from... From Psalm, and then Jesus answers, don't, don't uh, test your Lord. Okay, but did Jesus say, no, that's not talking about me? No, he, he, I agree. He, you would say yes. That, that's something. I, yeah, I'm not sure whether that it's complete. To right. That, but, Jesus did you know, not what say. He's saying, you know, he's trying to be tempted by the devil, isn't he? Yeah, so, but Jesus didn't say. Okay, the devil is a liar. But yeah. Jesus did not say that. That that, that verse is not talking about me. Yeah, he sure. actually he affirms yeah. and says the following: What you just right. said. Do not tempt the Lord your God. Yeah. So Psalms 91 is actually talking about Jesus. But if we read further down, it also says. And this is where I believe that the Muslim belief is actually coherent with the first century belief that God saved the, uh, the Messiah. As it says here, it says, uh, You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample on the great lion and the serpent. Because the Lord loves me, says the Lord. I will rescue him. These are key words here. I will protect him. Nor... Sorry, for he acknowledges my name, he will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Was Jesus not in trouble in the Garden of Gethsemane? Of course he was. Mm -hmm. I will deliver him mm -hmm. and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my Yahushua, my salvation. Mm -hmm. Right, so clearly we can demonstrate from this that the Messiah was saved, yeah. that God protected him. And he wasn't delivered up to the foul well, I, think, I think you've got a problem there, and this is where the strength of, the, of Christian, or the Christian, Christian faith comes in, is that the Gospels were written, uh, definitely Matthew, Mark and Luke were written prior to the destruction of the Temple, AD 70. Most um, 
most scholars would say that, you know, 90-95%. Uh, John was written later, 1899. Okay, I accept that the Gnostics might have started at the end of the first century, but they're still a later Christian sect than the very early ones. And we have found if, gospel and, and, and if you look at the Matthew writings of Paul, they're even earlier than what the Gospels were written. And they were written on earlier um, earlier uh, documents. Yeah, but if we look at the codex, how, do you, are, you are you aware of the Codex Sinaiticus? Are you aware of the Codex Sinaiticus? Uh, that's in the British Library, isn't right, it? Right, yeah. The Codex yeah. Sinaiticus fourth was, century. is 4th century, yeah. right? It's the it's actually, Bible. yes, the complete Bible, and it's actually it's considered um, authentic. It has the complete gospel inside of it. Yeah. And if we make a, 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 a comparison between the, the Codex Sinaiticus and our contemporary uh, canonical gospels we have today, we see a complete difference. In, we, we see there's an, an amputation of differences between the, um, the Codex Sinaiticus and our current gospel. Now, I, can, I don't think the meaning has changed. No, I, I think I, some of the, the, I will accept that the, there are changes to the, some of the words, but they are inconsequential okay. changes. No, no, I will words demonstrate. Like, ah, no, the, no, 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 no. Not the meaning. The meaning no, has not No, changed absolutely not. I will demonstrate to you that there are verses that's been completely not even it's not even there in the in the codex and i'll give an example mm -hmm. uh, if we look at the first epistle of john chapter 5 verse 7 and 8 it says that there are three that bear record in heaven the father the son and the holy spirit and these three are one right that verse right not only has it been taken out as a fabrication but the revised standard version authorized in 1952 has completely expunged that verse and the reason why they expunged that verse is because if you go back to the early Codex Sinaiticus, it doesn't contain the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. That's number one. Number so we two. we know that though. Sorry? And we recognize that, don't we? It's actually written in the first No, but uh, yes, exactly. wasn't there in the other. Pre so precisely. We're honest about our, our, our book. No, no. I, Not no, so much the Quran. Is no, it? no, hold on one second. We will get to <laughs> the Quran. There's a need of it, well, exactly. We, we, I mean, Actually, we'd... I would like to ask you something historical. Um, Wait, I've hold been on one second. At uh, the early Kiblis facing not to uh, Mecca. What do you say about that? Hold on one second. Yeah. Hold on one second. Because I think that's quite I, an interesting. I, I, thing. I want to. And you're talking about some early Christian sects. And it's quite a lot that says that Islam was an early Christian Jewish sect. We're talking, about your main doctrine. We're talking about the main doctrine of Jesus, mm. Jesus crucifixion. Well, I'm just asking you something. Else. Yeah, but yeah. tell me any tell me any main doctrines that Shias and Sunnis disagree with. Sorry? Nothing. Tell me any main doctrines that Sunnis and Shias disagree with. I'm not talking. About, I'm, I'm more to say about the historical origins of Islam. Why no, 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 no. What? Early, uh, mm. Early Kiblis facing no, Petra, no, for example. No, no, no that, that, first, that, 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 this, this is all, this is all far fetched, and this is not even taken. No, the, you got this Dan Gibson. I know that. Yeah, he, he, uh, well, he's not Dan Gibson. Patricia, Crone. Patricia Crone even. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think she passed away. Yeah, she, yeah, she even she, she even didn't take it seriously, and this is this is a very well, this, this is a very thing. sad sad thing because for fourteen hundred yeah it's unfortunate. <sighs> No, because for 1400 <laughs> years, Christian missionaries going around accusing Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu of lying and no, cheating, no, 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 and all of a sudden, this is very recent. Wait, stuff. wait, sorry, sorry. Oh, and okay. all of a sudden now, you want to question the historicity of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi I mean, this is very strange indeed. Right. Well, I mean, look, very it, strange. Well, you're 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 doing it to the Bible, so I can throw it back at you. No, it's what, interesting you didn't. What bro no, what Brother Hamza bought is scripture. Yeah, sure. Okay, okay. And which is about first Gnostics and how. The Bible is incorrect exactly. now, in putting Jesus now, on the cross. Now, I said, well, look, yes. you've got a similar thing here that your early Kiblers face north towards Petra. And it does seem to show certain no. passages in the Quran. Uh, Tom Holland speaks about it in his book. Tom Shadows. Holland. I mean, uh, all these guys, I know, they're just, they're just aren't they? I can see. Of course they're clowns. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> yeah. well, you know. Of course. They, um, so are you, got, oh, wait, hang on, are you... Yeah. You know, are when, you, it, when it talks about Lot's wife. Well, hang on, hang on. Are you, wife, are you questioning? That's in the Dead Sea, uh, hang on, are you questioning? And the, you can see that. Not problem. Are you? And the Quran says you can see no, that pillar. No problem. And you pass it every day. No problem. So are you? How could you have seen that if you were in Mecca? Have you? Are you now scrutinizing the existence of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? No, I didn't say that. I'm just saying that perhaps he's in, he was further north. He wasn't for that far down south. Oh, tell me any Arab Christians that believe in such thing. I don't uh, ask any Arab Christians. They wouldn't any, believe it. Anything you say. What Arab Christians? Yes. Go and ask them. Well, why is the Makkah, Arab Christian view? Makkah, the, yeah. the, 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 the Makkah, right? Which is I the, don't quite get the, the point Karaba, Arab Christians versus. Because no Arab Christian Christians. would ever take this claim seriously. This well, is why, why this is a desperate attempt 
from Orientalists because for 1400 years they couldn't fathom how could a man like Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam able to produce the Quran that no human being able to meet the challenge. Now what do they resort to? Let's try and find any evidences to scrutinize. He doesn't exist. So now they bring up about the Qibla, I didn't say, about the Mecca. I, no, I think he existed. No. I think he existed. No, but, no, no, no. But it postulates, it postulates here that he's making stuff up. Correct? No, the Qibla. No, by, by, by the way, by the way, we believe in the previous Qibla. By the way, we believe we believe in the previous Qibla. I think that, what it, that, that, I, sorry, I think sorry. What it shows you is that the history was fluid of early Islam. And then it started to solidify. No, no, no one, no one takes this yeah. claim seriously whatsoever. I think a lot of people are starting to take it very seriously. And it's a only lot of people. very recently that it started to come out. Really? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. I think for, 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 for most of Islam's existence. So for 1400 years. So, yeah, so, people, so, people so, took the story and said, yes, it's so, so, true. So, 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 so for 1400 years, yeah. nobody, knew, uh, nobody knew the Qibla was referring to Petra. I mean, well, come they on. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't do the analysis. In the come on. Did that Gibson did, for example. You come on. Him. Even in your own, even in your own Bible, in the Book of Psalms, it mentions that blessed are those who go to the valley of Bakkah, which is another term which is used for Makkah. But mentioned in mention, mentioned in chapter three, no, 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 verse ninety six. Historical book. Huh? Yeah, I'm talking about historical analysis, archaeology, archaeological analysis. Okay, so can you now. give me? Okay, so can yeah. you give me any? Okay, so can you give me any historical evidence? any archaeological evidence or any textual sources mm -hmm. that postulates the existence of Abraham and Moses. Can you? No, 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 no. Abraham and Moses. Yes. Are there? Um, Zilch. I would say, well, there, I would say that before that there is archaeological evidence of... Yeah, but where? Where's your proof? Noah's Ark, no, example. I'm not asking about Noah's Ark. I'm asking but about... Before, no, I'm asking about Abraham and Moses. No, that, that, is, that is assumption. So I'm asking you, so the reason why I'm doing this, because there is double standards. Actually, hang on, no, I would say that, 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 that you can find uh, historical evidence of the Jews in Egypt. I didn't ask about Jews in Egypt, I but asked that was about... Moses' time. No, you I asked, asked yeah, but Moses. people can make stuff up. People can make yeah, stuff yeah, up, a man called Moses, a man no, called no, Muhammad Sassan. No, you so, can see it's there. Uh, Alex. You can see the semantic, semantic uh, you can see the uh, Jewish settlements, uh, you can find... No, that's bias. No, that's bias. No, no, no. Do you know how the historic city works? You can even see... There was a, there, there, there's a small pyramid uh, in Egypt, and inside that, uh, inside that tomb, there's a guy with a multi. No, but he's head. asking about no, Abraham and I'm Moses. Asking about yeah, Abraham and Moses. At the same time, isn't it? Yeah, but no, can you give us any uh, archaeological? No, no, or, no, 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 no. You're missing the point, Alex. Historicity yeah. has to and be. The walls are so, can, can you, can, can, sorry, let yeah. me complete. The historicity mm -hmm. has to be free from bias. Mm -hmm. So you cannot bring up Jewish sources. I'm you not, have to. You are. You just said Jews from Egypt. You just yeah. mentioned that. No, I said the Israelites. Yeah, that's that's, that's bias. But so you can, can you bring? Can so can you give me any non-contemporary Jewish not. sources? Okay. So can Google uh, Joseph's Canal in Egypt. They still. I didn't ask about Joseph. Canal. I asked about Abraham and Moses. But Moses is after. Them. No, it doesn't Moses matter. No, okay. I'm asking. I'm asking so, Abraham and Moses. Okay, so Moses took the people out of Israel, out of Egypt, didn't they? And they no. went towards the See, no, no, no. That's that's as though it's a historical fact. So can you give me any historical evidences? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other than the Jewish and the Muslim sources, can you? And Christian well, you sources, can, can you? Can Jericho, you can see the falling down walls, and you can see the barley that's burnt inside. Show me, show me, show me. Just nowhere, nowhere. I can't, what, you want to go on a plane? Not a single, there is not a single historical, there is not a single, the walls have sorry, fallen down there, is not, there is not a single historical evidence for the existence of Abraham Moses. <laughs> now, this is the reason why. You're talking why. crackers, mate. No, I'm not talking crackers. <laughs> can you, you can't even give me one. I've just You're bringing it from one. the Bible. I've just given you one, the walls of Jericho. Down. What what does the walls of Jericho show? No, do you remember when the Israelites went around it and they blew the trumpet? They went around the walls seven times and they blew the trumpets and then the walls. Well, how does that down. prove the existence of Abraham? Well, Moses, you asked about. But Moses. So these are the Israelites who came out of Egypt. So there's a bit of archaeological evidence no. for you. No, that doesn't okay. prove any. Because now this that, started that could, because I came to you. No, 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 no. And you no, got I'm just, excited no, here. I'm just, I'm just. So I think no. you're hopping on a hot. No, plate, Alex, I'm Alex I think you're showing double standards here because look. <laughs> You, no, 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 Alex. No, no, no. I, I can see what you're trying to do because this is desperate attempts from no, Christians. Not desperate, this is, this is, this is. This is you with guys all due respect, this. This, with all due respect, this is desperate attempts from Christians, right? You are, so now you, you want to attack. Here. Now you want to attack with the Qibla. You want to attack with the Qibla. No, no, no. I, I didn't Come say on. that Muhammad didn't exist. I think he did. I think he existed further north. And I, you you know, know, there you go. So, so oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. But so this is this is. Mean that that Patricia Cohn doesn't even take it seriously. I'm telling you that. Well, she before she died. You know what she said? She said it is. 
beyond reasonable doubt that mm -hmm. there was a historical figure called Muhammad. Uh, I believe it. No problem. I believe there was somebody, whether he was called Muhammad. So where is he from? Where is he from? I think he's from Petra. That, look, that's what I'm thinking he's from. Hang on, hang that's on. Where Patricia, Crone, Patricia Crone doesn't say that. Well, Patricia Crone wrote the book Hagrid. She's only disputing she? about the Qibla. That's it. She's not disputing about no, Muhammad she was, no, she was talking about the trade routes for Mecca and saying there wasn't any trade route for Mecca. It doesn't exist on any map. There's no archaeological evidence in Mecca. So that's meant wait, wait, to be the hang on, city in, wait, wait, hang, in, hang on. In the absence world, of it? evidence is not evidence. Yeah, but no, on, it, hang on, hang on. You go hang on, hang on, hang on. And you see, and you see the, the you know, the no, Colosseum. Alex, Alex, Alex. Yeah, but, that's, yeah, but that's, 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 that's just an empty, yeah, but with all Jews, but that's, that's, that's an empty, this just, just, just if you're saying, if Patricia Crone is saying there's no evidence, she has to prove that there is no evidence to, to make that claim. Exactly. Otherwise you can't, just because, look, for example, like, it's like the Codex Sinaiticus. Mm. No one knew the Codex Sinaiticus existed until it was unearthed. Exactly. And then when it was unearthed, then they came to the conclusion, actually, wow, we've actually found um, an entire gospel which you know with all the narratives inside of it but before that no one knew it existed so just because there's something when was absent it, when was it found the, the fourth century by michael professor michael tessendorf no where right. was it found right this michael chap the uh, kind of sinaticus it the, originates from the fourth century sinai it, it was found in sinai by professor okay. um michael what tessendorf date? 19 uh, I, think, I think it was in the I'm not entirely. I think the I'm 19, not entirely sure. I'll have to. Yeah, we can, re we can research that, but the point is. It, it's pretty similar to what we've got. There are some lateral differences, but there isn't a meaningful difference. In it. But the point I'm trying to say is that just, just because there's something absent doesn't mean that there's, non -ex there's, there's nothing that exists no, no, to suggest sure, sure. that it exists. Yeah, but it's so, just. It's just you know, you know, if you don't find anything in Mecca and it's meant to be the oldest city in the world. It's like, come on, guys. Yeah. Okay, okay. Before we even find stuff. Okay, I'm going to ask a question. You know, okay, what? You dig down and you see the old. Before, before we discovered. Before, okay, before we discovered the longest mountain, right? The longest mountain. Yeah. Okay. The tallest mountain. Sorry, the, the, the tallest Everest. mountain, right? Yeah. Right. So, was Mount Everest always the tallest mountain before we discovered? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So I you know. can't then say, oh, evidence. Uh, there's no evidence of Mount Everest being the, the tallest mountain. You can't say that because. You, because you but have to give. You didn't even know the mountain. That's the, that's exactly my point. Yeah. So if you're to, we, we, so, you so just so, so, the, so you should be able no, to no, no, look no, and find no, but, no, 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 no. But your claim is there is no archaeological evidence. Does that mean that it's not true? No, it's not. Yeah. Perhaps in hundred years' time, like, you may find archaeological evidence. The problem for you guys is the possibility of that argument existing is true. Yeah, but Patricia Crone didn't clear. provide no evidence. You see, no if evidence it, you have, there's no evidence in Mecca. Before and there's no evidence to reject that there is no Mecca. Yeah, there you, you go. So this, that, so this is so it starts to get it starts to get quite far fetched. You have to really have a look. I, I believe from, it's far fetched from I, your point. I think from, from from Muslims you can believe it, but you have to believe it on faith, and you can't believe it. So on the just like you believe in Abraham Moses by faith. No, that there's no archaeological evidence. This is the point. The, the, thank you. See that the thank Israelites you. were in Egypt. That's bias. No, no, do you know how historicity works? You can see. No, the you cannot bring. No, you cannot. You can see, I can you bring it. I can bring it. I can bring it from the Quran. You, can see you the wouldn't accept it, would you? Houses. No, Alex. Alex. No, but you. Archaeologists who are not Alex, Christians. Alex. Say these are semantic people. Alex. Alex. Here. Alex. Listen. 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 <laughs> you, listen to me. You cannot use Israelite as your source of evidence because there is bias what, you have to give me okay, objective so source so, so you're, you're confusing you? the israel so when i say israelites i mean the people who were there in egypt not israel not israel today i, I already okay. knew that i'm okay, talking about sorry. israelites yeah. you cannot you cannot use israelite as a source for historicity why because yes you are you are I'm using today's scholars and no, you're they're not. saying this is where you can find these pieces. No, you're not. I asked for. Know? I Did asked you know for the, the, the Egyptian... Alex. You're struggling here. There is no historical. No, no, no. no. So, sorry, Hamza. Okay, there is fine. no historical evidence for Abraham and Moses. Okay. So if you if you're willing to if you're willing to scrutinize about the Qibla, it's not in Makkah, should be Petra. Then be consistent. Be consistent about Abraham. Moses. Okay. Do you have uh, Do you have any evidence? What I'm saying is the is there is evidence for the Israelites in Egypt. And there's evidence that they were taken out and brought to the promised land. But, but, but what, the, what, what source? Tell me. Well, tell okay. me. So, so tell us the processes. Into... Tell us the processes behind, um, you know. We'll go back uh, to, uh, you we'll know, to, uh, uh, Abraham. So let's, say, let's look at the, the Israelites crossed the Red Sea, didn't they? No, that's your assumption. Give me evidence. Well, it's in the Bible that they crossed. No, so but, that's my whole point. But what's the you evidence? You cannot use so. Bible. But then when, when you dive in the Red Sea, 
you can see chariot wheels, coral, uh, corals in the shape of chariot wheels. Anyone can argue anyone that can that, argue could, that, that could anyone. have well, appeared there due example. to, you okay. know, but uh, because, something yes. breaking and falling exactly. under. So there's exactly. any, yeah, any it, really... It, people can like bring up molecular steel. I mean, these are... Debris, these are <laughs> which would match the biblical story. The, the thing is, you can you keep going through the Bible and you say, well, this match is here, that's a coincidence. And you can keep doing that. The trouble is all the coincidences... Mm. Kind of start to build up this well, weight. No, yeah, but you're not, you're, not, you're not actually. You're still, you're, you're still at some stage. You're still yeah. going to make that assumption and say you still going to make look, that. No, 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 this wait, is going, this Alex, is it. Alex, no historian can tell you that there was no man called Moses, and no historians will tell you Moses did exist because there is no historical evidence to suggest otherwise, right? So, if you want to scrutinize about the Qibla that is supposed to be Petra or not. Then be consistent with your belief about Abraham Moses. Sure. But what I'm saying there is, you go. the Kiblas are facing Petra. The early what evidence? Face, you can see them in the ground. Give me evidence. Google it on Google Maps. No, why should I Google it? It's you. You're making the claim. Yeah. Well, well, as I mean, a claimant, you should be able to substantiate. Well, look, go home and have a look. No, no, no. I want you to give me evidence. Well, okay. Do you I know what? We can't go on a this flight yeah. and do it. Okay. Okay. But maybe you know, next time I'll print them off. Okay. Next, the next time. Next because time. Next time. Out there. It's out there. Okay. You know, just do the research, guys. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying that that means that Muhammad didn't exist. No, no. What, no, no, no. I'm not saying that. No. But if I'm saying, as a said, claimant, yeah. as someone who is uh, putting forth uh, an, an argument to demonstrate that you know it was Petra. Hold on one second. That yeah. it was Petra and it wasn't the other way around. You need to provide some evidence to to back what you're saying but if you're saying that you don't hold that evidence now then we can come back next time and we can discuss yeah. so what i'd say is that so, you know it. dan gibson who's lived in the middle east for what 20 25 years he went round and he did the analysis so i can rely on his work okay say, well yeah, next week that's, that's bring that next week yeah. and then we would we, we will analyze sure, absolutely i'll try and bring some evidence of the israelites being in egypt no problem Okay, guys. All right, Alex. Thanks so much. Good to chat. Thank you. Thanks so much. Good to chat. Good chat, man. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Um, that was Alex, and we spoke to Alexander earlier. Inshallah, I hope and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he opens their heart to Islam. Amin. And uh, makes them seek a little bit more knowledge about Islam because their, their Islamic knowledge, unfortunately, is quite tainted. Anyway, Jazakallahu khair and may Allah reward you all. Amen. Um.